It is 6.06. Well, this meeting is waiting to select board to order. First order of business is to review, discuss, and approve meeting minutes from our May 28th meeting. Any comments? None from me. None from me. I believe we approve the minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Joyce is not here yet. Any comments on the vendor or the payroll? Lines? No. Or do I? Uh, okay, we've got the hearing scheduled for 6.15, but since we're early, I will move up uh, Chief Savini's uh, presentation for a new part-time officer. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Um, so we have an individual that um, approached me looking for part-time work. He is currently a full-time police officer with the VA in Leeds, the Veterans Affairs uh, in Leeds. <clears throat> he is also a part-time officer in the city of Polio. He's been with the city of Polio since I think 2000, I think it's been four years. Four years since he's been there. Um, so he has experience. Uh, he's been a police officer since 2000 in different capacities with different departments. He has all the required levels of training that we're going to re that we're going to need as far as the, the new post standards. He's meeting all of those standards at this point. And his name is John Wesley. And I'm just looking to make a recommendation that we should appoint them as a part-time police officer. Uh, this is not gonna this is not gonna be any additional funding required for this position. This is just a position to kind of fill some part-time shifts that we still have that are open that are current part-time officers aren't are taking all of them. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at the resume you gave us and it looks very solid. Uh I, you know, my personal feeling is I don't want to approve or disapprove until we get to need him here. I think your say so is certainly very valid, but we like to meet candidates for positions. Okay. Rather than approving them. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the way it's always been done in the past. Yeah. Um, I usually bring them to a meeting at some point to meet the right. board, um, but we get the appointment. We get the appointment done so we can get them started on, on training. We have money left for this year's budget to, to do some training, so that's why I want to get them on before before July 1st. Well, that, Julie, what do you? Um, my question is if he works 40 hours at the Veterans and 15 for Hampton County and 30 for a polio, when does he sleep? And so when's he going to work for us? He's, he's currently looking to switch from polio to wait until the ah, okay. until he'll not be working in uh, polio anymore. And the way his shifts work at the VA, they, his days off fall on our days that we have available. Right. So he works long, ten or twelve hour shifts at the VA. Um, so. And how many hours are you looking to appoint him in Waitley? You probably said. So there's no specific hours. It's just any available That's shifts right. that are that are open. It could be. Three or four shifts a month. It could be one shift, two shifts, it could be eight shifts. You know, depending on what's available and what he's available to take. So it, again, it won't be increasing the number of shifts that we have available. It just be an additional person. To fill. Increasing personnel available to fill those shifts. Yes. Um, I don't have a problem appointing him and he's going to later, but is he? Okay. It's no, really that, no, I, to wait. no, it's fine. It's, especially with the, the with the fiscal that. year ending, and you wanted to. Yeah. Get, yeah, out get out of the budget yeah. and i think that that's a good enough reason that we can do it uh as if it's credential seem yes eminently solid and i've scheduled some training pending your appointment but i didn't schedule okay, okay. Training okay. Rates, but that anyone else have any joyce has joined us joyce has yeah, joined us joyce. hi sorry about that i was uh i spaced out about the meeting being tonight and i was actually listening to the Deerfield Board of Selectmen because they're talking about the Senior Center um, feasibility study, and they wanted my input on that. So, but I this is the priority. So, <laughs> I'm back here, <laughs> and I read over what um, 
uh, the resume and such that Jim had sent. And I understand what he was just saying. I understood it to be just adding to our part-time roster, not adding to our part-time hours. Right. Good. So, okay, but again, with the fiscal year ending and you're wanting to get it into the year, that is certainly a reason to approve. So I will, unless there are any objections, Joyce, Julie, I will move to approve John Wessig as a part-time police officer. I'll second. Any other discussion? Vote, Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank I'll you. make arrangements to get into the next meeting. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next item of business for a couple minutes early, but I think we can probably begin. Uh, a hearing on alleged violations of the sports decision regarding Ms. Donahue and her dog. Um, can we get a motion to open the hearing? I move that we open the dog hearing. Second. Okay. Uh, he's open. Chief Savini, why don't you present what, what the nature of the complaint is? Okay. So, um, I don't know how you how exactly you want to handle it. Um, we we've had since since the town placed the order in effect, which it's Richard, the which was June third. June third, the town issued a notice of seizure for Denise's dog uh, from stemming from an incident that happened uh, just prior to that. But before that, there was numerous incidents from the town's original uh, order, which stated that the dog was not supposed to leave the property. And can, since, can, can do you have the list of the complaints? Just I do. So it's on, can you read that off just so we have it on the record? Uh, so there's a there's actually two different lists. There's a, okay. a list that was for the notice of the dog hearing. There is there's eight eight different uh, violations or eight different incidents that would uh, that would show that there's a violation. There's actually and, more, I, I'm sorry, more but, on but this this would be a violation of the select board's order. Yes, of well, June, June 28 last year. Yes, which restricted. The dog to the owner's property. Yes. So okay. since since July twenty eighth or June twenty eighth. June twenty eighth. Since June twenty eighth. Um, so I have a list. I don't know if you want me to give you front of each each one and give you a brief. If if you yeah, if you do that, yes. Okay. So starting back on. Make sure that it's in order. Uh, July. Or uh, 2023, there was a call. We we share a system with uh, Sunderland as well, a dispatch system. So this this showed up on the same call. We put up calls related or stemming from from Denise. So this was actually an incident in Sunderland where Denise was walking in the area of some apartments. And she had her dog with her, and um, the party claims that she's not she wasn't supposed to be on the property, and that it was upsetting his dog. It's just an incident that shows that the dog was off the property. So that's one incident. Uh, August thirty first, call to the station. We received a call to the station from the Northampton Animal Control Officer stating that they've had numerous calls regarding Denise and her dog while she was walking with the dog at Book Park. Again, that's just a, a call that came in to us, so not specifically lately, but just shows that the dog was off the property. They had a call on January 26th, 2024, on Florham Road, where 
Denise's dog was running loose up the road, and Denise was running after the dog. The dog was not on the leash. January 26th, on February 10th, Paul came in. This was actually on uh, a call that came in to us advising us of an incident that was happening in Holyoke where Denise was lost on Mount Tom with her dog, again showing that the dog was off the property. She was located the next day by state police and brought back to the house with the dog. Let's see, this was February 26th. This was on Mount Road in Hatfield. Paul came into our station. An individual stating that he was he was hit by Denise's dog. What road was that again? That was on Mount Road okay. and uh, Hatfield. Yeah. Paul came into our station first and we transferred it to the Hatfield for them to deal with it. February 26th, <clears throat> Paul went to the station for Denise and her dog in somebody's backyard at that address. But she was asking the parties for a collar for, the, for her dog. And they were concerned because it just had a rope tied around its neck without a leash and a collar. And they asked Denise to leave the property. At that time, there was an inquiry as to the status of the dog's vaccinations. <clears throat> that was, again, that was on uh, Strip Road, February 26th. And that? March 22nd. Can you tell sorry. us if there, it was followed up on, the vaccinations? Uh, it was. And there was no vaccination at that time. With no active vaccination on file. Thank you. March 22nd, um, caller reports that Denise is on the porch with her dog, looking in windows. Where where was this? This was on uh, Lower Mount Road. When did this? March 22nd. Not like anyone knows what's going on. <laughs> April 29th. This was in another call that came into the Whaley Police Station for Denise with the dog on Mount Road and Hatfield again. The dog was impeding traffic with Denise. They were in the road. Blocking traffic, the dog jumped on the car, scratched the car, scratched the person that was driving the car because they were not able to, to drive through the area because she was blocking the road. And Mount Road in Hatfield, that was in April, April 29th. May, caller on Haydenville Road near Denise's residence. Uh, a caller stated that she came across Bo's dog. We responded to the area. It was her her dog. The dog was brought back to the house by the person by the party that found the dog. <clears throat> May 9th. Walking, somebody walked into our station to report that Denise had her dog in their backyard. This was on Weber Road. Well, residents stopped by the station to report that multiple times recently that Denise was in the road, in yards, with her dog, and near at Weber Road. We're becoming more and more frustrated. No trespass orders were in effect, and the dog was on those properties. 
May 29, which is this, this is the incident that resulted in the uh, seizure of the dog, the seizure order, where Denise was with the dog in the middle of the road impeding traffic. This incident went on for about an hour and 45 minutes. Where, where was this? Hayden this was on Hayden Hill Road. In Hayden Hill. It started, it started just, just near her house and then continued down into Haydenville and the dog was taken at that point by the Franklin County Sheriff's Animal Patrol Officer and then the order was, the seizure order was then issued a few days later. There are, oh, there are currently three pending violations that the district court from setting from some of these events. <laughs> but they have not been adjudicated yet. Correct. <clears throat> uh, Denise, oh. identify yourself for the record and then tell us whatever you'd want to tell us. My name is Denise Dunning. I live in Daly on the road that most these happen on. Uh, Weber Road is basically across the street from my house. And we have a lot of FedEx, Amazon, uh, mail trucks backing up. My dog was hit by a truck um, a couple of years ago. A little sound sensitive. He never attacked. He had a little mark because the guy grabbed the rope that was around his neck. He was actually giving me a ride home. And he did not have rabies. And we already spoke, and that was friendly. Um, Weber Road is across the street from the house. My dog is never being walked. He doesn't have a leash. I need a screen dog door. Most of this was on the ice. I don't have a pavement driveway. And he gets out chasing me. Drivers that go beep, beep, beep because the big truck hit my dog a couple years ago. And he's still, he's old. He's not out to get anybody, but he has been loose. Not walked, actually, in this town. Okay. Uh, but the, this board's finding and resolution of last year was that the dog was not supposed to go off of your property. Correct. But these Amazon drivers across the street back up onto our property. My mail is not on my property. My dog is on the runner. He's a little big. He kind of breaks the runner sometimes. He's not aggressive, but he will go after the truck that that um he was hit by actually. Okay, so that doesn't explain why the dog was being named. Well, why North, we don't North have Hampton, Holyoke, Sunderland. Oh, because I, mean, I wasn't in the town of Waitley. That is not relevant. Right. The order is so the dog is not, that either. The dog is not supposed to be off of your property. Correct. Period. But I was not bothering you on in the town of Whaley. I agree. But that, guess what? Didn't know of any of this until now. You most of it. You these didn't. charge these calls that come in. I don't know about it, most of them. The, 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 the calls are just to add to the record the what we have to deal with is the dog being off of your property. And what would you do for a solution? That we have to figure out. We, have to, figure we out. have to hear what our options are. But <clears throat> a flashing yellow light would be, would be very wonderful on that bench. Yeah. People need to but, slow down. But they, once, once again, this has nothing to do with the dog being but five does, feet off your foot. But it has to no. It has to do with the dog being on uh, Weber Road across the street. It likes to stop in my yard and in Holyoke and in Sunderland. Yes, I'm aware. And, and other places where it's Holyoke not... and Sunderland can take up again. But I will tell no, you, Weber no, Road. It is, um, excuse me. Going. Excuse me. It is not that for them to take. It is for us to take up because of a violation of our order. Okay, I understand. The, the dog being off of the property anywhere. But we have dogs on our property all the time. And secondly, we have bikes that stop because they get lost all the time. And they stand there in my driveway. My dog sees these bikers and goes nuts. So what am I supposed to do? Tell them they're trespassing in my driveway? I'm very nice. I'm not well, like that. Once again, I'm willing to say that we will overlook when the dog is close to your property, just for the sake of argument. I'm not saying that they are, okay, they are that have done by too by the way it's not like it's last two but days. the issue is the dog being off of the property at all I anywhere understand. now i understand but i will also say and it's not easy keeping him on a property when he's used to walking well, all the time but to not get easy to, is too bad 
I know, you need to but you out. gotta have some passion. For no, animals. we have compassion for you. We have compassion for animals, but your job is to figure out how to get right. a dog on the property. So but I took them off the town, out of the town, to no. not bother. I did though, no, that, and that's what happened. And I'm sorry, that, that, but have some compassion the, of a dog that is extremely active, not violent, yeah. just active and loves to run. Last year, when you were in this room, you said that you would keep him on the property and right I said, I and i was concerned i said it's a small property and he's a big dog and you said it's a huge property he'll be fine right he would so, but there are people backing up all the time it's but that doesn't, and i know so what's the solution a fence a it won't work there what I, I don't know because it's just fence. Won't. electric fences won't work because it's wood if it goes down a thing, but it's Physical not gonna work. Fence. My neighbor's gonna do that. Physical fence. Okay, I don't have money. I don't have a job. I don't have a license. Okay, so money is tight. If this wouldn't have happened if I didn't lose my license, and that was several years ago. So I'm working on that. That is my solution to get back on my feet again. My dog is gonna be probably gone. Out, well, to, over age, who knows what's going on by the time this is resolved. I am working to get a job back, back on my feet, getting my daughter some help, okay? That's what I'm doing. And I have an outlet, and my outlet is going for a walk to get clear in my mind. That's not a problem. That's fantastic that you go for a walk. It I is. I love walking too. You Great. can't walk your dog off your property. I understand, but you gotta have some compassion for a dog that's used to walking all the time. Sorry, Excuse me, Kate. I, I just want to I understand what Denise is saying, but I just like, like to point out I I don't have specific incidents, but I can certainly speak of numerous occasions where Denise has told me specifically, as well as other officers individually, that she's going to continue to do this and that there's nothing we can do to stop her. Her dog is a free citizen and it can go wherever it wants. No, that's all that that numerous right. times. <laughs> I'm, I'm I did not say it like that, but thanks. Does that represent this was your before feeling? your order? It was when I was walking him on the road. Oops. I'm, well, I'm, I'm not fighting you. Listen, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt on local mm -hmm. transgressions. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Weber Road or Strip Road or something. But how does the dog get to other towns in a car? We haven't done it. We but, haven't had a car. Our car broke. It but, hasn't been done in months. This is so it, old news. It, it was it not does, done recently. It is sufficiently new news that it is after our order that the dog not go off the property. And the right. dog chasing a FedEx driver, as I said, I'm willing to give you the, ben by a truck. the benefit, of, benefit of the doubt that all those are accidental. And But putting a dog in the car and taking the dog off the property is local. We, we weren't through our in the way. I know, I understand. It, but I was walking in a dog park, friendly, no problems with anybody else. Off of your property, which is right. not supposed to happen uh, right. according to the order. Right. Oh, I'm is, also going to say I'm not as comfortable with giving you the leeway around the transgressions locally because I know that there were folks up on Wall Mountain Road who felt very uncomfortable. Right. It was very icy when that happened, and I couldn't get them if I tried. And that you should ask for some no, action. But I, I, you've given me on Laurel Mountain Road right. several times since then. Walking alone without the dog. People think I have the dog, but I don't have the darn dog. So I see that I'm spread it out to you. That's only I've only reported the incidents where the dog was seen. It, it has so happened January, February, March, twice, twice, twice. We live one degree. I don't care if there's ice. In March 2024, mm -hmm. you off the property, off your property on Laurel Mountain Road, where clearly people came in to the dog hearing last year and said we feel unsafe with Denise and her dog walking near our property and sometimes on their property, March 22nd, 2024, on somebody's porch. I don't want to give you that leeway. That's fine, but I will also say I was not walking my dog when that happened. He ran up Weber Road. Lormont Road is right there. I did not take the road. He went diagonally over. And yes, I'm sorry for that incident. But I, How I can you over. keep your it's dog on your property? Um, How are you going to do that? Easily, I would get a screen door. I don't have one. I have someone who opens and closes my door. It's broken. 
Everyone is well, the weather is nicer. We have gotten through the winter, okay? So we would go back to the runner in our front yard that has 40 feet. But you had to break it. No, we have a stronger one. But yes, he did break it because that was a long time ago. And he, he's older, he doesn't care. He doesn't want to go anywhere. I don't believe that. <laughs> but that's your right. You're entitled yeah, to I, that, but I'm telling you right now. So I what if you have a commitment from you the, have the like, stronger runner? Correct. Not getting a fence. A better door. A screen door. And that's where it's all happening. And you're, you're going to keep the, the doors on the property. And what? And you're going to keep the dog on the property. Correct. Period. Period. End. Not, not going in the car. Not going anywhere. You have a car. Well. So, so some, some, going. somehow this dog has, has, got, has, gotten, has, has gotten miles it's, away yeah, from other you know towns. Because I don't, and I never see them, and they're all working. But secondly, you don't open your door if you don't want to get jumped on when there's a loose dog. I'm sorry, but if you are afraid of the dog, don't welcome him with open arms. That's the one that he chased that she gave a leash to. That was the seizure uh, day. Don't open your door. Keep you driving. Hit him. Nobody cares about him. Why do you have to open your door? Darling, yes. darling, you don't have the world make space for your dog. Don't open the door. No. They open the door. No. Don't They're have a dog the door. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Open Keep door. driving. It's right by my house. I'm getting the mail. I disagree with that. I, I agree with you, and I disagree with that. But don't open your door. And still, my, my, my concerns are the willful violations. Putting the like, dog yeah. into a car and taking it someplace off of your property when you knew Aren't you do working with the town of Waitley? Why does that concern you? Because it is a town of Waitley order that the dogs stay on the property. I understand, but see, that, 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 that's concerned. the evidence. That, that's why we care. Okay. It is not that we're looking out for the citizens of other towns where you might or might not go with the dog. Right. It's because that dog is not supposed to be off that property, and you understood that. At the no, time, yeah, at the, not at, the town, but the town of Waverly. Yes, you, I, I, you, I saw gray areas. It there. was made. Sorry, I was here. It was made clear to you at that. You think it was at last know. year's hearing you don't know what's that happened. the dog was not to go off of the property, right, and left of my property is another town. And I'm sorry for no, no, there was no, there was no, there was no. Excuse me, there was no unless there was no. But you can take it to another town. There were no exceptions, right? And I'm sorry for that. So okay. where is the dog currently? And I'd like to know that myself. The dog's currently at a shelter. No okay. cut. Okay. Go you, ahead. You had something to say, and then we can so get some broke. comments from back. I just want to look to see. Uh, it looks like Kyle Dragon. He's the he's the person that works at the shelter. He's the animal control officer for the Franklin County Sheriff's Department. It looks like he's on. Um, yeah. Okay. So I don't know if he has anything to add as far as the, the shelter. I was told that day that the dog was coming right back to my house. The next thing I know, the dog's in a shelter. The cop told me he was going to come right back. Then he's in a shelter. Can't get a hold of him. He's been there. I have no idea what's the condition. Well, he's, on, he's in a shelter because there's no plan yet. There's no plan in place to keep him on your property and to keep other folks safe and fine. But, but they said he was coming right back, so I was misled. Well, they misunderstood, and so did you. We had some comments. Um, yeah, I'm just... Can you identify yourself? Oh, I'm Kathy Crafts. I live on Weber Road. Um, I'm just wondering, just wanted to clarify um, when you said the last, you haven't been walking the dog? The dog ain't gone for two weeks. No, so, I have not been walking. Before that, were you walking the dog? And have you been walking it in Waitley in the last six? So, I'm not intentionally right. walking the dog. If my dog got up Weber Road, it's because he got out of the door that had no spirit. Right. Well, and I, I was chasing it. I'm going to clarify then. So I was in my front yard yep. gardening. I remember. Denise walked by. She had the dog. No, I did have the dog. Oh, yes, you did. And I said to her, What was this? Denise, I said, I, I was so shocked because I didn't know that all this was happening. That she was, that I, oh, I remember that dog. Yeah, you're right. Property. You're right. And I was in total shock. And I said, I said Denise, uh, I didn't think you were supposed to walk the property with your dog, and she said something about someone I didn't say in New York had backed yes. into her yes. yard, yes. and that she had to get the dog away because the I dog the <laughs> car from New York was in her lot yard. And I said, "Please, your house is that way." She was heading toward the Waitley Chapel, mm -hmm. and she said, "None of your business," and just kept right on walking up Weber Road. 
I have a 10 year old granddaughter that comes to the house and the biting issues are a big concern to me because she plays in the yard. And I've, I've also, I will say, that I've also watched Denise walk up the road with dog's leash and intentionally go drop it. The dog wasn't pulling. This was last year, probably last fall. He big. But he wasn't pulling. He was just walking along and she intentionally dropped it. So I can't speak to her in the, 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 the dog was on the leash and then the she dropped, dropped the leash and it ran off into the woods and okay, fire uh, the property. And he did Denise appear to be taking the dog on the leash back home? No, so she was walking up like, towards Waverly Chapel, and I was, you know, in my yard and watching, and she just dropped the leash, and the dog ran off into the woods by our property. Okay. But it was a month ago, maybe three weeks, that I saw her walking on Glover Road with her dog, and asked her, "Why you walk property so with your dog?" So if Denise had the dog on the leash and dropped it, not at that time. Yeah. That was well, this was two times. She well, walked on property in, 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 in one of the instances. Had the dog on a leash and dropped the leash. And, dropped the leash. and she was not heading home with the dog on the leash. This no, but I will say that that was that incident. This, this is over a year? Yes. Yeah, I was going to say that incident. It yeah. occurred yeah. before, before the order. Before the okay. order. Okay. But the whole, I keep my dog under control. The incident where she's walking by the house and I asked her, are you not supposed to be keeping the dog on your property was maybe a month ago. Sure. This, this happened. I was not it's, walking with her. We've seen it. I saw it myself. She she frequently will drop the leash. She walks down the middle of the road. It's causing traffic hazards. It's, it, her, her behavior is involved. I will say, I was not walking the dog that day. I do. Yes, I was walking him, but I was not going out for a walk with him. I ran up to my house and I like to listen. Yours. I like to talk. Now, listen to me. I know exactly where you live. I'm not out to harm anybody. My dog ran out to go up chasing those stupid trucks. Another point, had a leash on him because he was in my yard, get the mail, which is not in my yard. And I was chasing him, and I didn't want to get in trouble, and I didn't want the police call, so I went to another town. Sorry, I got picked up, and nobody got hurt. But I was walking him. You're right, but not intentionally. And yes, I would get a runner. I'm sorry, and I'm sorry about your like daughter. She's saying less kids. From it's where really good in my house. Is, and she kept walking just towards the chapel. They yes, just I got picked up. Anybody else have any? Comments. There was no mail vote. There's a um Kyle Dragon just um did a chat. He says his connection is choppy, so I don't know if he has something to say, but he just chatted okay. us. Okay. I, I see I assume KD is Kyle Dragon. Yes. That is uh, correct. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Okay. Um I uh, asked Chief Devine if he wanted me to attend. Um I just wanted to pop on if I could answer any questions that the board may have relative to how the dog's been with us or anything along those lines. Can just tell us what, what the status of the dog is right now, both <laughs> physically and legally. <laughs> Absolutely. So the dog is currently um, in the custody of the town of Waitley, uh, secondary to being the seizure order being issued for the violation of the uh, dog orders. Um, the dog is healthy. It is currently located at the Franklin County Dog Shelter. It has been hands off due to its aggressive nature and demeanor towards anybody who approaches the kennel. Um, that was also witnessed at the scene uh, when I picked the dog up. The dog uh, at one point lunged at me as well as uh, for a very, very short period of time turned on Denise as well and gave her a growl when she was attempting to assist to load the dog into my cruiser. Um, the dog is currently unvaccinated right now. It's been more or less in quarantine. As I mentioned, it's hands off um, pending the outcome of this hearing due to the nature of the dog. The shelter was not willing to put um, individuals at risk with the attempt of handling this dog. Uh, for vaccination until it was absolutely required, uh, if the board opts to return the dog to Denise. Um, okay. Thank you. 
May I speak as to why my dog lunged? It's because he's been in a cruiser before, and your cruiser had a hole, and his paw got stuck in there, and he has a memory of going into a cruiser, like he's on baits, actually, and that was horrible, and my dog actually was bleeding from that incident, so it would make sense as to why he lunged, but he didn't do anything aggressive. He's still okay. from Adam. Yeah, another comment? Um, Karen Kirk is on May 29th, I was at tie up on Aiden Go Road for traffic to stop both ways. Um, the dog was going down the road, you know, just car to car. A tow truck driver stopped <clears throat> and he opened his door. I think he probably thought this woman's trying to get her lost, you know, get her dog contained. And I said to him at the time when I went past, I said, be careful. And at that time, the dog went out to the door. He stepped out, and it looked like it's just going to be a dog going out to someone. And it started barking and backing up and sitting away from the truck. One of the questions, one of the issues I have is I travel that road a lot because it goes back and forth to my son's house. My grandson rides his bike from Florence to our house. If that dog is on the road, and there are cyclists, whether it's, it could be even a motorcyclist, it's gonna, if it's free on the road, it's going to go towards some cyclists. It's going to go yeah, towards a person on a bicycle. If someone's walking their child down there, it's, it's not- Is this conjecture or you've seen this? No, I've seen this. I've got pictures of it going cycling. towards people or a bicycle. I, I have not, not seen on it. I never have. No. I, my question is, if, if she doesn't have the dog, today I was coming back on Go Road and I saw her with a leash in her hand and I thought, oh, the dog's loose again. And she was standing at the end of the driveway and, you know, like this, looking up. So I thought the dog's up there again. So I'm not sure what's going on there. And explain to you, but it's not my dog, but I'm not going to run out the other person's dog that keeps running in our yard. But we'll say my dog. I'm just, uh, another person's dog is not. It, it is I'm not just right. sure that part of right? People on the road. This dog is free. It approaches cars. It, it could approach anyone. So, and it could it could take my grandson down on a bike. Okay, Joyce, do you have any questions or comments? Thank you. Um, just want to make make sure you're not. I forgotten. guess. I guess I, 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 it might be that it's not really a question or a comment for anyone there, but I just want to say I'm, yeah, I hear and I'm, and I'm listening to it. And what I, I guess the big picture that I'm hearing is that Denise is unable to comply with the order, mm -hmm. has not been able to comply with it for the past year on many, many, many occasions and does not really take it very seriously. Um, and then that's what I'm that's kind of what I'm getting out of this like there's all these like oh but what if this then I can I don't have to comply like there's all there's just a simple order that has to be complied with and there's aren't any excuses there aren't any I'm not willing to I'm with Julie on the I'm not willing to do any benefit of the doubt for I mean when you're going across the street to get your mail the dog does not come with you you know, no, it has to stay on the house. property and Jesus, that's Jesus. it. And there isn't any, there isn't really any other excuse. So it, it, it seems like the last year has just been a demonstration that Denise, you're unable to comply with this order. And the order is for the safety of all of your neighbors. And yep. So that I mean th that's just kind of what I'm the summary of what I'm seeing here and yeah. hearing uh between your testimony, between Jim's uh summary of complaints and from what the neighbors have said so far, that, that's kind of what I'm seeing, that you're not able to comply with this order. I think that's and and, and that's that's the only thing I guess I would say. Okay. Just Denise or anyone else have anything else to add? Uh, my solution would be to get a screen door. That's all. That's all. That would save a lot of right. ass. Sorry, just right. disagree with me, but I disagree with you. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments from anyone? Let's see. Just one last comment. Um, 
and the encounters that we have, which usually are lengthy, they they go on for an hour, two hours sometimes. <laughs> Repeatedly, we've been told by Denise that I can't control the dog. The dog won't come when I call him. The dog won't. She tries to walk one way with the dog. The dog goes the other way. She just follows the dog because she can't control her dog. She's told us. She's told us that numerous times because she has no control of the dog. If she's out walking in anywhere, she has no control. So, I do. I got a different collar. It's much better. Thanks. Okay. I just didn't want to choke from that dog. Any other comments? I'm. Curious about this letter. Can I confer with you yep. privately? Uh, I was that something yes. separate? I'm going to be asking your administrators for what our options are. Yeah, okay. And that's exactly. Fall in for that. Okay. There no I wanted to ask okay. actually yeah. Kyle Dragon. Are you still there? I am. Hi. Um is this a dog that could potentially be rehomed with someone who is capable of taking care of it and would keep it vaccinated and uh in health in good health? So with the demeanor that the dog has presented at the shelter, I actually brought this up to our director. The Franklin County Regional Dog Shelter would not place, rehome, or transfer this canine. If that was an option that the town of Whitley wanted to pursue, the town of Whitley would have to take custody of the dog and individually on their own find such placement. Okay. I'm getting uh, the, do the dog has just been too volatile with our staff that for the liability reasons, the sheriff's office would not let us do any of that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll know the comments. Quickly, yes. Why do you assume I'm not going to vaccinate my dog? I still told you I need to get my license back. It's not allowed to leave the town. I called several vets to come to my house. We haven't had they, their months. They're in the midsummer. So but, I do you know I that you're going to modify three on Saturday and okay. excuses for you not to do a what? variety of things. There are a I'm lot. Sorry, of, what'd you say? There are. A, you're giving us a lot of reasons and excuses for why you can't keep the dog on the property. I don't really? necessarily. Yeah, a lot. Um, we're getting the dog vaccinated. You can ask Kyle Dragon when, about it. When do you the get the supplies up on Saturday at four thirty? I also called the vet, and they also said they are mobile, and they could have had that done at the shelter that day. The dog wasn't supposed to be taken. He was bringing him back to my house, and then he did. So you can ask anybody. You can call the vet. Kyle, can you confirm if the dog yeah. can be vaccinated? So because I'm very concerned about an unvaccinated so dog. The dog can be vaccinated and we could facilitate the vaccination. At this point, once the town issued their seizure order, as I explained to Denise at that uh, a little while ago, we put a hold on all that because the dog has been so um, volatile with our staff that we're not going to put someone in danger um, for a dog that is in quarantine with no access to people or other animals right now. If the board does choose to return this dog to Denise, then we will facilitate the dog being vaccinated before it leaves at her expense. Oh, exactly. And I registered the dog with you guys, and I was on my way to actually get the dog vaccinated, and things got in the way because they only do it on Saturdays, and my husband was working on Saturday. Thank you. That's the only reason. Thanks. But that's not an excuse, it's a reason. You're welcome. Okay. Um... Can I get a motion to close the hearing? I move that we close the dog hearing. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Here is Aye. If we can hear now, what, what are, are our options? options? What are our options? Um, council was supposed to send us a list of options, but in this previous, um, in this, it, it's in your packet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, one uh, third paragraph is justice of district court. Um, to explain it. <laughs> so essentially, now that you close the hearing, you have to deliberate and make a determination if it's a dangerous dog. If well, first and foremost, if the order that you issue 
was violated. Okay. And then you have to make a finding if, in fact, the dog is dangerous. Um, you can ask the shelter, I believe, and Kyle, you can correct me if I'm wrong, following the guidance we got from town council and the statute, that you can ask the shelter to continue to confine the dog and the chief can uh, consult with the DA and file a charge uh, for probable cause that the date dog is dangerous and then it will go to court hearing. But until that time, the dog will be a And then it becomes a matter for the court with the police department working with the DA. Okay. What are our options as far as remedies or, <clears throat> or actions? Please, sir. What do we have the authority to do? Town Council didn't get back to us. Go. So, um, so yeah, back yeah, to what Larry says, still um, the same options that were available to you at your last hearing are still available to you at this one. Um, in the in the statute, there's set they list seven well, actions that that could be taken. Taken. There's also uh, fines that the town can impose based on its town bylaw. They can impose. For the first incident, second incident, subsequent offenses, they can issue numerous citations. That's that's part of the uh, town bylaw. Uh, but it's in that it's in the chapter one forty one fifty seven section one fifty seven. It lists the seven seven different things that the town is uh, is able to do as far as what what restrictions they can put on the order. Now I've got a. <clears throat> A copy from a note that was sent from our attorney on January 18th to town administrator, uh, which I'm hoping this is the entirety of it, but I will read it as it is. If an owner or keeper of a dog is found in violation of the order under this section, the dog shall be subject to seizure and impoundment by law enforcement or I don't know, control officer. If the keeper of the dog is in violation, all reasonable effort shall be made by the seizing authority to notify the owner of the dog of such seizure. On receipt of such notice, the owner may petition with the hearing authority within seven days for return of the dog to the owner. The owner or keeper shall be ordered to immediately surrender to the licensing authority the license and tags in the person's possession, if any, and the owner and keeper shall be prohibited from licensing a dog within the Commonwealth for five years. A hearing authority that determines that a dog is dangerous or nuisance or that the dog owner or keeper has violated an order issued under the section to report such violations to the issue, issuing licensing authority within 30 days. So, uh, uh, this second paragraph <clears throat> upon probable cause to believe that the dog is dangerous or that the dog is being kept in violation or in violation of an order, we have already done. One restraint, two confinement of the dog is considered necessary to your property, which didn't happen. Uh, or impoundment in a humane place of detention. Uh, okay, so I just where the dog, which is where the dog currently is. I'm going to move that the lease is in violation of our previous um, finding about the dog. Uh, by bringing the dog off the property in a variety of ways that have been reported. Okay. That's the any, um, any yeah, basically, you're, if uh, the audio got a little bit garbled there, but uh, what I'm hearing is the first finding uh, we need to do is whether our order was violated or not. And I would, that sounds like that's what um, Julia, Julie had moved. And so I would yeah. say, yes, I second that. Okay. As would I, I, I would agree. I just want to clarify that my giving the benefit of the doubt was simply on those items because there are other more egregious violations. Yeah. It, yeah. It's not yeah. to say that they didn't happen. It is not to say that they were not violations. It is just to say that the dog going to other towns is clearly willful, yeah. whereas it is could be argued that in the vicinity of the property, it was not willful. Yeah. But that I don't think we even need to reach a finding as to whether that was willful. We've got yeah. the transporting the dog off the property. So we have two things here. We right. have to find whether it's in violation and then second what to do about right. it. Right. 
So I yeah, move we, it. We, we have a motion seconded. No further discussion. All in favor of the motion to find Denise in violation of the order of uh, June 29th of last year. Is that the day 28th? Okay. I don't want to come with The hearing is closed. Huh? The hearing is closed. That's fine. Just... So, yes, the June 28th of last year. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hi, you should roll call this since we're hybrid. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to roll call. Choice. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. Okay. Now we have to address the issue of a remedy or an action. Is it possible to keep the dog impounded in a humane place until we have more of a response from the FDA that we're waiting for? Um, well, let me say that. Yeah, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle did say that they could, right? Oh, they get yeah. oh, okay. okay. It, my reading of the statute is that we have the authority once the dog is declared dangerous, which we did last year, so we don't have to do that again. Is that if the dog surrendered? The owner can be prohibited. We can prohibit the owner from licensing any dog in the Commonwealth within five years. Do we? Is that your reading that we have that authority? You have the authority to to seize the dog, and they would be able to and you can say that they can't have a dog with four or five years. Not any other dog. And as far as like, if like given the dog, the yeah, the nature of the yeah. violations and the repeated violations, that would be my preferred action is that Denise not be allowed to have a dog for five years because there's no indication that she can control this dog. Yeah, there's and, a comment about, uh, from uh, KD looking for a point of clarification. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, nope. I uh, I know you guys are in your deliberation, so the hearing's closed. So I just want to do a quick clarification. Um, historically, when stuff like this has happened, if a dog is found to if the dog owner is found to be in violation, the dog is the board usually opts to remove the dog because they're in violation of the dog orders. At which point, the dog owner has ten days to petition that in district court. It is considered non-criminal so it would not go through the da's office uh this okay. board has the final authority whether that dog returns to denise or not and then denise has that option to take it to a clerk magistrate for an impartial review of this hearing to determine whether the board's decision is upheld or if the board's decision gets reversed uh during that point if the board were to order the dog removed the dog would remain with our agency for that appeal. Yeah, okay, see in the background. Yep. Um, the dog would remain with the shelter for that appeal period. And if no such appeal was lodged with the clerk's office, at that point, the town could make a final determination on what would happen with Miles. Um, if I don't know if that helps clear up a little bit of the confusion or not. I feel like it does, right? Because it, it sounds like one option is to well, we, to remove the dog, and that starts a clock on an appeal, uh, if there is one. And then uh, we also, it gives us some time to understand what our options would be should an appeal fail, um, uh, then what we uh, would be, uh, you know, enabled to do. It sounds like it's very similar to what Julie was suggesting to start with. Yes, so. Can I, uh, can I clarify yeah. with Denise, do you understand that? That we will, oh, I'll be appealing. <laughs> if you say that, yeah. Yeah, and that you will. You're not. No, I understand that you have 10 days. Yeah, 
So you have 10 days to appeal it. I've already read the paper. I'm not reading it. Yep. I know that you know how to read, but there were understandings <laughs> last year because you could be told that you know how to read. Oh, so you believe that. that. Same. There were misunderstandings last year. I want to make sure that mm -hmm. you understand this year that you have 10 days to appeal. Can you tell me that you understand that? I can tell you that I understand that. Okay, thank you. That's You're what I wanted to clarify. Okay, so I will make a motion that the dog be removed from the dog because physically actually no longer is not currently in Denise's possession. But that because of the repeated violations and the willful violations of our order from last year, that Denise Donahue be prohibited from licensing the dog within the Commonwealth for five years. Is that two motions or one? That's one motion. I will second. Any further discussion? Joyce? Any? Uh, nothing further. Okay. We'll move to a vote. Roll call vote. Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that's the order. Denise, as you have indicated, you understand that you've got 10 days to appeal this. this How issue. do I go about that? Yeah. With the court, district court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The clerk where... office, Greenfield District Court. Oh, that's yeah. great. Can so you what's up? Up? Knock it off. No, I'd like to repeat the fuck. Thank you. What was the outcome? Excuse me, can you identify yourself first? Uh, can you identify yourself? I do not need to. You know, okay, I don't need to either. So then what please the leave. What's the outcome? Not identify yourself, please leave. What's the outcome? Your mother please. Excuse me, Julie. Please, please talk to her. How do you know she's my mother? Please. Know, you don't know my identity. Who are you? You look yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, talk to your mother. Mm, you guys, you guys fucking suck. You look like a fucking witch. Look at that bitch. Looks stupid. Good for her. Hopefully she gets fucking. Okay. I think I think we're done. I think she was. I think we should move on. Don't worry. Sorry, not that red. Handle. Nothing you Yeah. Which one was that? Okay, uh, well, we next, I see we've got Nick Spagnola, Nick Spagnola here. I'm just waiting for the chief to finish dealing with the disturbance. Uh, the, the audience is welcome to stay here, but we are finished with the... <laughs> With the hearing on the dog. What can I say here? I don't know what to call the variant. I understand it. Wait for an escort to our car. Sorry. All right. Yay. Um, okay. Well, why don't we take a five minute recess, wait for the chief to, to get back? Okay. Can you pause the recording? I can pause the recording, yes. Okay. I'm going to start it. Okay. Uh, Chief Savini is temporarily unavailable. Nick, I'm sorry, we have to put you off for a minute for a few minutes while the Chief deals with another matter. Uh, so we will move on to reviewing and voting to more of fuel bid for diesel. Mm -hmm. Yes, you. Um, so I sent out bids and we got one point five from Paris Oil, which I uh, gave you your panel right now. Um, I emailed Keith uh, this over to him today, and he responded that he would like to go with the um point three five. So the first one you see there. Okay. I ha don't have that printed out, but I do have it in the email chain. Joyce, do you have the bid um, form? I, I remember uh, when I looked at the packet today, I saw something. It was I thought it was handwritten though, from yeah. from Karis. And um, uh, you're talking about so I've got that page up now. Um, and can you say again which one is the 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 one we would be going with here? It's the point two five one. So the first little box you see. So that's for low sulfur diesel and number two fuel oil. 
I'm sorry. It's it's the rat rate plus markup price. Right, right. The but there's point two five appears in two places: one for low sulfur diesel fuel and one for number two fuel oil. So we and both both for both of those, then. Yes, correct. Uh, okay, understood. I okay. I think it's a good idea. Okay. Any discussion on that? No. Can I get a motion? I move. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Oh, I move that we uh, accept the rack plus uh, markup 0.25 per gallon offer from Keras for our low fuel, low sulfur diesel fuel and number two fuel oil. Second. Any other discussion? Vote, Julie. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Aye. Okay, I see she is now back, so we can move on to the go move back to the well, Catboid various various extension hearing. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh Patricia Berlin, okay. can you fill us in on exactly what the nature of the variance is and what we are okay. discussing. So you met with um, the Sokols on January 30th to consider whether to extend or uh, modify or terminate the existing variance they had at Club Castaways to strike the requirement they had um, about a uniform detailed officer for police on Thursday nights. We made that order for four months. Um, it expired May 30th. We voted it in the last meeting to extend it one month. Because you didn't have an opportunity to have the folks in to discuss it. Now you've scheduled it for discussion tonight. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Nick, good to see you. Present. Yes. Why Hi. don't you tell us about what you're asking us to do? Um, I guess in short, just if we could just, just continue with the police detail on uh, Friday, Saturday. Uh, that would be fantastic. We're still trying to figure out like, the program to uh, just to, to do more business. I mean, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, it's not as consistent as, as Friday, Saturday. Um, I think we've had some really, really busy nights on Friday, Saturday. Which typically right now, it's just the best days. And uh, just always handled like, very smoothly. So Wednesday and, and Thursday just uh not just really not as busy so no issues with the friday saturday police detail if uh things really start to ramp up and get as busy as uh as friday saturday on uh on wednesday and thursday then we, we know better we would, we would call in for police detail if we have a special event we really expect a packed house um we'll we'll inform the chief and we'll request the detail for sure um Public safety is always important to us. Uh, intoxicated drivers, our priority. I've said it many times is once you leave the club, it's just it's highway. So um, that's always a top priority for us. So if we have an event planned on those days, we know it's going to be busy. We uh, we can we can call in for the police detail, no problem. And as far as Friday Saturday, no no issues with the police detail. So I think it's I think it's working pretty well for now. So. No, no plans on requesting any changes to that schedule. Yeah, thank you, Chief. What can you give us a brief rundown on uh, your, your your relationship with Bell Castaway and how the details are working out? Yeah, I don't I don't have any disagreement as to anything Nick said. Yeah. Um, there, there, there have been any issues, nothing nothing to report from any of the officers. Things have been going smooth. Um, the only issue that we have is just getting some back paid uh, invoices for details. You, you, some of the details have not gotten their back pay. Right. They've not paid for the- we have, we have 13 outstanding invoices at this point, uh, which the <clears throat> board would make to try to get those. Nick, get those Nick you're, you're aware of this? I'm aware, I think the total's just under 3,000. And basically January, February, it was beyond quiet. So like, I think next year probably won't open in January at all. Um, probably be a good time just to do some maintenance, clean some things up. So we know we have some some bills due. 
And uh, I feel confident. That I think this week we can just get everything to a zero balance. So we're aware of it. And uh, basically over the last couple months, I've just been paying the detail as uh, as the shift ends. So that way there's no balance being carried. So it's just, uh, you know, 13 invoices sounds like a lot. The total dollar amount, I believe, is under 3000 And uh, we don't take it lightly. Just, uh, you know, essentially yeah. we're a startup. The place has been around for 50 years. We get it. We were closed for three. And it's just revamping the program. People still call every day asking if we're open. When did we open? So we're still fighting some battles as far as uh, just the messaging and, and what, what we're about. But. I don't take it lightly and I understand the fiscal year is closing soon or it may have already closed. Um, so I will clear these invoices up. I would say this week I can, I can get it done. As far as you know, are you current on your taxes? I was informed today that, that we owe just over 2000 on a property tax. Keep in mind when we were closed for three years, we paid all the taxes and never had an issue, but, like I said, it's a startup, essentially, and we'll clear the invoices up. I think uh, I think that totals less than than five thousand right now in total invoices due to the town, which we don't take lightly. So we'll we'll get it cleared up. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. we 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 want to be a good neighbor, but we also want to make sure that our police who are on the detail are getting paid, and we want to make sure the taxes are getting paid. Yeah. yeah. The timely yeah. yeah, like we but, said, you know, detail for Thursday, probably a financial burden. So, um, can I ask a quick question? Maybe not of yeah. Nick, but uh, just a clarification. Um, yeah. I think Trisha said that last meeting we extended for a month, and my memory no, was we extended until, until this meeting. Until this meeting. Until this meeting. Until this meeting. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Just um, we extended two weeks until this meeting. Yeah, because Nick couldn't make it to the last meeting. Right, right. Uh, because the um, I, 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 that was my memory too, and so I, that was that was a typo. Uh, sort. Right. No, it's just my okay. failing memory, John. <laughs> <laughs> so, she, okay. do you have any problems with eliminating the third the requirement for a Thursday detail? Uh, um, the requirement. Thursday's already yeah, gone. been gone. Okay. Um, my recommendation would be to not require us to be there at all. Oh, no, my, no, that's not my understanding. My understanding was that uh, they're requesting that the only thing we granted was the the requirement for Thursday, and that had a time limit on it. And that this is today about removing the requirement for Thursdays only that for another well. period of time. Yes. Well, so, the variance said Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The original variance right. said Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Right, right. and so, we and we Thursday, only Friday. crossed Thursday out. And that and that would still be in effect unless we decide to remove the Thursday. That was my understanding. Also, that we're, so, we're talking about the Thursday. So let me recap. So um, when you have the hearing January thirtieth, I'm reading for your decision. You decided that you they did not need to employ a detailed police officer on Thursday nights. All right, mm -hmm. so I'm correcting that. So the variance was continued that they employ a detail officer on Friday and Saturday nights. Nicholas has mentioned that he has no problem with the continuation of Friday and Saturday nights. Chief is recommending that they don't require any detail Friday, Saturday night. So that's what's before you, whether you uh, continue okay. or don't have anything at all. Hope that's clarified. Right. Uh, right. Okay. Well, I I I, I think I, I I disagree that we eliminated Thursdays for anything but a, a short period of time, and that's why we had to make the vote two weeks ago to extend that um, uh, so, variance right. on the variance. Right. For that is me. So if we do nothing, then the requirement for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday will will remain if we say thursdays have been working out let's try it for another six months that would be one possibility uh, but i'm not really hearing anybody uh other than maybe jim saying they shouldn't have them anytime and even that's not what julius has actually meant or nick i'm sorry um <laughs> had mentioned that he wants to yeah. keep them on friday and saturday um i 
I'm thinking we could um, uh, continue the the Thursday, dropping the Thursday night requirement for another six months. Um, and but I I was trying to figure out a way to make that contingent on the uh, payment of the previous you know the the outstanding bills basically, um, and I don't know how to do that. If <laughs> Trish or Lynn have a um, have a yeah, way, I, I don't know how. What, what else? We don't we don't have anything else on the table that would we could make contingents on. Right. Well, then, could we extend it for another two? Could, let's extend the Thursday for two weeks, and that gives them two weeks to pay the bills, and then we can have a conversation at our next meeting, which I believe is the twenty fifth, um, and talk about extending for six months at that time. Nick, do you think you can settle up the outstanding balances? Yeah, I mean, if you want to put a contingency on it, I get it. If that makes the select board feel a little bit better, you know, I understand. But if I'm telling you that I'll have the invoices cleared up this week, then I'll have the invoices cleared up this week. I think having any detail on Thursday is a complete waste of time and waste of resources. Um, but... If that's um, what select I, board I, wants, that's that's fine. I hear um, you on that, but can, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to find a, a way to to uh, get to there. And how about, uh, Joyce, to, how about this? How about we say that the Thursday requirement can be dropped? It will be dropped effective of when we get certification from the chief that the that that uh, the detail bill has bills have been paid. And from the treasurer collector that the taxes have been paid. And when, you're saying as soon as, that when we get notification of those things happening, at that point, the requirement is dropped. For what period of time? What? For what period what? of time would it be dropped? Well, permanently. I okay. That. I don't agree with. But the, the Friday, the Friday, Saturday would still be in place, and we could always revisit it upon. Uh, I think we could revisit it in, in six months. I think we could revisit it in six months by putting a six month time limit on the variance, on the variance of the variance, the eliminating the Thursdays. I mean, I think I, I think we might not have a conversation if we just drop it. That is the kind of thing that tends to fall off the edge of uh, the agenda. And I, I guess I'd really rather have them come back and have a conversation. I mean, it can be by Zoom because we have all our meetings hybrid. Um, but uh, I, me, I'd be more comfortable with uh, putting a time limit on the uh, dropping the Thursday requirement. I, I I understand where you're coming from. We have the chief who would be willing to drop the detail requirement entirely, which I don't. We are not. I don't agree with that. that. To do. Uh, but it just does not sound like the Thursday. Is but is we, you know, in six months, I don't know what it's going to be like. In six years, I don't know what it's going to be like. Let's go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little, getting a little lost in the sauce here. Are we saying that uh, my suggestion would be that we continue the variance of the variance and do not have a detail on Thursdays for the next two weeks. And then when they show that they have paid all their invoices, we can say, okay, that continues ad infinitum. And then- That would be a decision to make in two weeks. And, and I would then, yeah. say, I would still and put a time limit on it. A big one, you know, like a six months. Like we don't need them in here every two weeks, but- um, we we I'm do just, need. I'm just yeah. suggesting that we drop it. We drop the Thursday for two weeks. We give Nick time to pay the invoices. We come back if everything's paid. We can vote yeah. to just drop it, and then we can in six months talk about dropping Friday and Saturday if all goes well. Or, Does that or, make any sense? I I don't think we promise anything about Fridays and Saturdays. I think the only point on the table is Thursday. Yeah, right. Right now, the only issue on the table is do we is Thursday is extending or 
know, under what conditions are we going to extend the Thursday? And I, I, I'm fine with your suggestion that it be extended. I it's just extended until such time as everything is paid, mm -hmm. and then and when then we then drop it, if we want to, then why not? I'm fine with Joyce's suggestion that we drop it for six months and we can revisit it in six months. I don't, you know, if there's so much business that becomes, looks like it's going to be, come necessary for Thursday, then we can revisit it then. If things are, go on the same path that they're on now, the likelihood is we would not re require six months, uh, Thursdays in six months. Either. Right. Okay. Okay. Is, is there is there a reason to mandate the Friday Saturday moving forward? Uh, We'd have to go uh, back to the you know the, that that was one of the terms of their getting the license terms. in the first place. Yeah. And, and, they, and, and, they, and by Nick's yeah. statement, they are looking to get more business, particularly Friday and Saturday nights. So let's I think we keep that in place for now. You know, we, we we don't even look at it for now and come back and we'll see what the expanded business does for crowds and behavior in six months if it if it has changed or mm -hmm. we can always look at it then. But for right now it's really just Thursdays that we're yes. Yeah. Well, I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. Okay. I'm just trying to understand the reasoning behind it just because of yeah. the burden that was on it, the it's, it, 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 well, those it, it's it's no, mostly no. that that we don't want to second guess the conditions that were put on that required extensive, as you recall, discussions at the time that well, the, that the, that, that, that of the sale and the license. Yeah. And there's no real reason for us to just wholesale repeal that requirement, which was a sort of carefully crafted compromise at the time. Well, I, okay. like I said, I understand it. I understand, I understand what you're saying. This is kind of getting away from what we're actually, what's the point of this meeting? So, Jim, if you want to talk offline about this, then we can talk. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Does someone want to craft a motion that mm -hmm. represents? Um, sure. <clears throat> um, I move that we uh, continue to... Oh. <laughs> The variance of the variance. Uh, we uh, continue to uh, uh, the uh, allowing a no police duty on a uh, police. Um, I want to say police duty. That's not the right word. Um, detail. Police detail on Thursday nights for the next two weeks, and then this will come up again at our next meeting on June twenty fifth. Second. Any further discussion? So vote, Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. Okay, so Nick, we'll revisit this in two weeks. And I believe that the point that we will consider mostly is whether everything has been paid at that point. Understood. Sorry we fell behind. Uh, not intentional. We're working through it. So we're okay. trying to grow. But we appreciate we, appreciate your time. I'm trying to go for it to work with you on that, but we just have to make sure everything gets paid. Okay, we okay. have a pride party Friday. We do have a pride party Friday, June fifteenth or the fourteenth rather, seven p.m. Suggest uh, if anyone wants to come down, check it out. Feel free to do so. It should be good. Amateur night Saturday night, June fifteenth. Always a fun time. Appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for the ad. Care. You got. It. You got. It. Okay. Moving on, uh, formation of an electric vehicle committee. Given, thank you. I do. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, given what we discussed last time with the uh, presentation on electric vehicles, as far as placement and uh, nature of charging stations in the town, I think we need to set up a partly a small committee to make a recommendation or set priorities of what we should think of putting in and when, because we will need mm -hmm. solid 
recommendations to get cost estimates for these things. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I would say a three or five person committee that does not have to be you know, more, probably more than once or twice. We already have the, the possible locations laid out, but we we just need to get have an idea of exactly what we are asking for to get a to get our costs, start getting our costs and grant and other information together to know what's involved. Real plan. Yeah. Kind of flesh out the details. Yeah. I we need, need to flesh out the details, then go back to the uh whatever the, the company name was the no, no, no. The the other one, the uh, the electrical Rivermore. Yeah, yeah Rivermore. Oh, Rivermore. Uh, who said that they would help us with working out the cost? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we need to get. That. So does anyone have any suggestions on? I um, said there should be a select board member in Joyce. Which you've been. I would be happy to do that. Um, I think we, we could ask someone the vehicles of the group. Yeah, we could ask someone from the energy committee to yeah. be on there. Yeah. Um, I uh, think we should have um, well, a town employee who uses vehicles um, to kind of have that uh, practical knowledge um, on there. I don't know if that, I mean, Keith has a lot on his plate. Um, but I think Keith seems ideal because he seems he knows a lot about um, a lot of the vehicles that we I, use. I would say Keith, Keith or his designate. Mm. And that would be three people already there. Um, Sylvie, uh, I don't know if she can be official member, but she's the person who's going to be helping get these grants that presumably and that we are going to need to help or that we should be applying for. Uh, to help offset initial costs. Um, that's four. Had, before it was fine. Uh, I don't think it's going to be such a contentious committee that we're going to worry about breaking ties. Yeah. So I think those four should be able to represent, you know, have good ideas about placement and nature of the charging, you know, level of charging station at those various places because that's really all we're talking about is you know do we where do we want level two le to ask for level two or level three or how many yeah uh, yeah yeah okay well okay um so you know i will move that we formulate that you know a committee to report back but Oh, the new town administrator. Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, we'll, we'll volunteer Pete. Yeah. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> I, I'm asking my question. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So, to form an electric vehicle committee, to task with recommending locations and nature of charging stations for the town, and that this committee be consist of Joyce Palm of Fortune from the Select Board, Pete Kane, Town Administrator, Pete Bardwell or his designee, and a member of the Energy Committee to be named. Right? Sylvie. And and Sylvie Jensen. And Joyce and Sylvie Jensen. And, yeah. and right. Okay. That's second. We Any further discussion? Question. All in favor, Joyce? Aye. Julie? Aye. Aye. And so some will be to let Keith know and Sylvie, who's not on her know. Um, okay. Next, FEMA flood maps discussion. So if you had a chance to read the official communication we got from uh, FEMA, we received our draft preliminary copies of the flood insurance rate maps, flood insurance study. Um, these will eventually replace the current flood insurance maps that we've had. Um, this is going on all over the country. 
The new maps will require town meeting approval before the end of this year. So if we have a special town meeting, it will need to go before town meeting. Um, fortunately, um, the um, the letter of map change and the uh, special flood hazard areas on the panels don't have significant impact for the town of Waitley, which is really good news. So you can see on the third page, fourth page of um, what's included in the packet, um, the letter of map and change where the parcels in town for those resident owners that are directly affected. Um, FEMA is required to send a community representative out and have a public hearing so folks can ask those questions. I would have expected us to be notified already that that would, with dates when we could have that. We haven't yet heard, but again, fortunately, since we're really only dealing with three folks in terms of actually having land or housing, I just personally wrote on behalf of the select board to all of those folks, giving them the links, the parcel numbers. You can go online and look and see where the impact is, just so they had every opportunity to be aware of this, um, because it, as indicated in this letter, it should be widely uh, distributed throughout the community and a big public education process. Had a lot of experience from this in the coastal community, but um, just want the board to be aware of this um, that at some point there will be a hearing and um, it needs to be accepted at a future town meeting. Okay. And, and just so anyone watching is aware, the properties that are affected are 54 state roads, 64 state road, and 11 Sugarloaf Street extension. So two at the south end of town and one at the Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, here they mentioned about maps, and my packet didn't have a map. Mm -hmm. there, yeah, and my and I guess that, that's I guess the first question. Am I missing something? Um, no. Okay. No, All right. That you have to go online and then you can look at it. Oh, okay. All right. So there's at some point I can get a link and go look for that online. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess the other question was, um, and this is some of it is just I I'm not remembering very well from when the last time this kind of thing came up. You and wouldn't. what I was yeah. remembering was there it's was like something at a town meeting. Yeah. We had to accept these maps or else we wouldn't be a, eligible for FEMA relief Anything. in case of a disaster. Yeah. So a lot of this is not necessarily about what's the realistic uh, uh, you know, possibility of flood at your property. Um, it was more about um, uh, having it, you know, some kind of record and if we have this we can apply for funding or not and it, it's not necessarily going to affect anybody's insurance you know it didn't it's you know it's not about flood insurance it's about having a documentation of where floods have been in the past is that unfortunately it, 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 it is insurance sure. rates that oh are, it is that oh, okay is, yeah this has been a process that's been going on for probably 10 years now. It's just Waitley is one of the, towards the end of this whole process that other towns have um, gone through this process years ago. Um, the last time the town of Waitley went through it was in 1979. So that would be why you wouldn't remember doing that. Um, however, yeah, yeah. these changes in these maps, although we only have three parcels that are identified as being changed, it could affect the insurance yeah, that's, Their insurance. that's what the intent is. Um, um, yeah, I did it in um, 2015 in Situate. So we had over a thousand parcels and it was like a full-time job because it was directly affecting houses that had never been in the flood insurance, required to get flood insurance, others whose flood insurance rates went up um, because the contours had changed. Um, the formulas that FEMA was using, uh, the contractors they applied to apply those formulas um, due to climate change or whatever. So that's what this is all about, which is also why we're required to accept them at town meeting. Um, okay. So they 
overlay for everybody being aware of the zoning here locally planning and stuff like that for these new areas so even though there are other areas that might not have houses on them these new FEMA maps are addressing other wetland areas in the town that the development officials and review officials in town need to be aware of. So when I say mm -hmm. it's good news, we only are affecting three residents, it's still looking at all the wet issues all throughout our community in terms of flood impact. And okay. also, if there's a disaster, whatever, they're going to look to see if we've accepted the maps. That's the key there, is yeah. accepting yeah. the maps. Yeah. As I said, I had expected the, the letter indicates that somebody would be contacting us shortly about our community meeting, and this is dated May 22nd. There's a 30-day time clock from that this letter. So oh. that's why I wanted to notify sure. all those folks personally. Yeah. yeah we do not have any affirmative action to take. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And when they so, say shortly is that the 30 days they need to have this hearing within 30 days and I I, I'm, I'm worried that people won't find out about it because right it's not a hearing it's just like an informational thing that someone will actually come with the maps that you can look at online they'll have a hard copy set oh, okay. but again it's only, only three people here whereas you know other communities that had many people impacted it would be a whole big thing but like Lynn yeah. said we're at the end because we weren't right addressed. Well, but for example, I think our conservation commission would be would want to know about this. Yes, I forward this letter to Scott when we got it in conservation. Yeah, and uh, and I I mean I'd like to see the maps and if they have a, uh you know a public uh, Q and A, then you know, I'd like to be there too. So and so if we find out about it, we should try and uh, try and get the word out. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Town meeting preparation review of assignment of motions. Mm -hmm. um, I have one question on um, the road control on the article 24. Um, I was talking with the chair of the planning committee, and he said he would talk to council and that. It should be majority vote, not two thirds. Have you? We're working. On have it. you? Okay. Yeah. Um. It was always our understanding that any zoning article required a two thirds vote. Um. However, there are some exceptions to that, and we're just trying to get a clarification. By town meeting, we'll definitely have that clarified for the and, and that can be change that town meeting yeah, because that's yeah. not wording yeah. that is being approved. Right, right. Okay. Uh, I think there was another similar issue on something else. That... Yeah, all the zoning, I, because, oh, uh, the only other one was um, using uh, vehicle stabilization. If that should be a two-thirds and okay. it says a majority. So, Anytime you're spending money out of a out of a stabilization, you need to have the two thirds. But I thought was I looked it up again and started to put it in the majority of the bathroom. Uh, I was not about to change what's on the the old fire website still. So I figured it'd be probably better to be safe. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> we've got a week to, to figure that out, and that can be an announcement from the right. from yeah. the moderator at the yeah. time that yeah. the yeah. that the wording is incorrect. Right. Okay. Uh, so, what else do we need to to do? Assign who leads the motions at the meeting. I know in the past you've just kind of yeah or, yeah. Um, yeah. What what we've done in recent years is simply go in the same so so se okay. same sequence. Well, we'll figure that out, and then the okay. planning board can be. Um, grant or a planning board member yep. and they petitioned articles will be by the person who petitioned so and that the article nine which is the general budget is usually done by the chair of the finance of the finance right yeah and any other 
the citizen petitions and the death, the lead petitioners. Yeah. We, uh, Trish has contacted them and they will be here to. Okay, to move them, move them, move them read, read them, move them. Okay. Anything else we need to to do? No, um, in the first time meeting, um, yeah, we yeah. still are planning outside. Um, Mark Luzier will be doing the electrical to go outside. We'll set it up pretty much the same as always, and hopefully the weather will hold out. If weather doesn't hold out, we'll be going inside. So that that call we made either the night before or that morning as to where the chairs get set up. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Next would be are we I'm sorry, Fred, are we assigning motions tonight or do we do that when we go It's not a formal vote of the board. It's, okay. Yeah. It's we gonna be no. Go for it. Just we wanted to make sure you, you wanted to you, continue you, to do the same process. I, I have the first article and then yep. Sounds good. We'll put names next to them all on the motions. And uh, we have to sign a fiscal year 25 accounting services agreement with Burkov. We've already voted this and simply have to sign. Um, this is for uh, Gara to continue her services right. with us. <laughs> Uh, nothing else on that side. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, we have an appointment to the historical commission, Ashley Hassler. We know Ashley. She lives on River Road, just right next to Norse Nurseries, and she worked with me on the 250 celebration and did a fantastic job yep you know, doing website and other social media things and this is a moment i'm glad to to move i'll second yeah. that any discussion hello julie hi joyce hi hi Shared I don't know whether on that particular note, I don't know whether you knew Alan McCardle was. Did he talk about that? He has resigned from the taking Alan McCardle's job. Okay. No, Ashley's taking Alan yeah. McCardle's job. Right. Uh, shared conservation agent program change. What is the change? Um, uh, which term? Goshen. Goshen? Put the town backed out, and I'm pretty yeah, sure it's it was Ocean. Okay. Yeah, um, there was six. Now there's five. Yes. Yeah, so now um, that in turn has changed the uh, the formula for, and as it is, I I'm pretty sure we budgeted enough for it anyway. I got, I'll have to double check that. It's that four twenty six. Oh, this is yeah. oh yeah, this is FY twenty six. Right. So it doesn't affect us for okay, FY twenty so five. Right, but it does affect the um, agreement. So there has to be a new um, agreement signed at some point. Right. So they already voted the agreement, and so Ashfield's the lead community. And they wanted to know if that will change our interest in the program since there's only six towns instead of five. In a, in a sense, it's done by a uh, uh, formula similar to the Hog. For Hog, um, it will be a 3% change for us, but I said it wouldn't materially affect us. And there was just two little words missing errors. So you'll just have to sign a new shared agreement when it comes, but we're still moving forward. And it, like um, Lynn and I said, it's an FY26. I think unless Scott Jackson changes mind about retiring, yeah. <laughs> we will continue yeah. to do a little bit. And, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So we've got enough. No. You don't need about. Okay. It was no. more of an FYI to tell you there'll be a little cost. Okay. Yeah, and also that there'll be a contract coming. Or do you have the contract? No, we okay. originally signed the agreement, but, but they, now, they, it's now we have to sign the revised yeah. revised agreement. Yeah. Right. right. So when that comes in, we'll let you know. We've got nothing. Like old business liaison updates. 
Nothing from me on the water committee before meeting tomorrow morning. Um, that's about it. Okay, Joyce, any? Um, yeah, we had a boo meeting for the South County Senior Center. Um, we mostly talked about uh, the day-to-day -day stuff and uh, how they're responding to the new space uh, constraints and uh, what's happening that they're moving to Waitley Town Hall. Some things are going to the Congo Church in, um, in Sunderland. And uh, there were some other places that uh, stood up and said, hey, you can use our place for free when you need a big dinner or something like that, like the Polish club, I think. And there was, there might've been one other place that said, um, Hey, you can use our place when you need that. So, um, and they're not asking for any money. So that was really nice. Um, uh, the right now there's, uh, the town of Deerfield is, is figuring out the, uh, who is going to do the, uh, feasibility study. So that has moved along to the point where they've got three finalists, that they're interviewing tonight and might even know by the end of the night which group is going to do the feasibility study and that's got to be done by december because that's where the extension was so that's moving along as well so that's all i have to report okay anything else from our administrators Sylvie wanted me to update the board that uh, on behalf of the Central School uh, Work Group, she's applied for two grants. And one is, I'm just going to read what she wrote because I'm not sure I'm not going to see it. <laughs> one is a match application requesting funds to cover local matches for grant funding requests. So if you can't make the match, it's a grant to give you the match for the match. Okay. <laughs> Okay. okay, I'm not sure I get that. Well, that does kind of make sense because yeah. he did ask me um, whether we had enough money to, right. to come up with a match, and we had hadn't included any matches in our budget anywhere. So this kind of makes sense. And then yeah. the second one is a placeholder request for additional funding in case the grant awards, if we do get them, don't cover the full cost of the grant application for the center school air. And I have heard informally that uh, a representative of the visioning committee may want to make an interim report to us if I hear that will direct them to get themselves on the agenda. Yeah, because you filled it up pretty good tonight already. <laughs> so, but it's, uh... well, I mean, it may, it, it, some may, may be not the next meeting, but it could be another meeting on further along. Yeah. There, Final report isn't due until October, but if we can get an, an interim report on what on the grants and the like, and what they're looking at. Yes. Uh, does anyone else have anything? No, no. We have a copy for Peter Monday morning that everybody, town employees, board and committee folks, and the select board of course is invited to at 10 a.m. Okay. And for anyone watching live, I just want to remind you that. Tomorrow's town elections at Town Hall on Chestnut Plain Road. Calls are open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. I have a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I second. I second. Well, Julie. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>